you're pretty limited with what you can consume when you're fasting. <laughs> Obviously, it's called fasting for a reason. You're not really consuming much. But you've seen in a lot of my videos that I'm totally okay with you consuming various teas. Black tea, green tea, herbal tea, whatever. You just want to make sure you're not adding sugar or honey or anything to it. So I decided I wanted to do a video that showcases my four favorite teas that I use when I'm fasting. These are all okay to consume during a fast, and each of them have a very specific purpose depending on where you are at in your fast and or what you're trying to accomplish with your fast. So let's go ahead and get right into it, but before I break down the different kinds of teas, I have to give you a quick understanding of the difference between black tea and green tea, because they're not as different as you think. You see, black tea and green tea actually come from the exact same plant. They're not two totally different plants, even though they may seem like it. The only difference is how they're processed and how they're quote unquote fermented. You see, black tea is just fermented. It's oxidized. It goes through a fermentation process. Green tea is not. Green tea, in essence, is a little bit more if, raw, if you want to call it. But what happens, and what the main difference is, is that when it goes through this oxidation process, this fermentation process, black tea changes a little bit. It gets a little bit richer in caffeine. It gets darker but it also loses some of the antioxidant properties. So there are some trade-offs. And black tea also takes the catechins that are normally in it. Now catechins, by the way, are very, very healthy things. So you know EGCG, for example, in green tea, that stands for epigallocatechin 3 gallate. It is a catechin. So when you have green tea turning into black tea, you actually lose those catechins because the catechins convert into something called tannins. They respond a little bit different in the body. It's not bad, but it's just important that you know the difference because I'm a fan of both. So let's get into the science. Let's get into which ones work for which period of time. So black tea during a fast is awesome. Talking about like the English breakfast teas, the Earl Greys, the good old fashioned conventional black teas. They're great. About 50 milligrams of caffeine per cup, you're in a really good position. What I would generally recommend using black tea for is as a substitute to black coffee. See, you don't have a ton of antioxidant effects coming from black tea, so you're looking for a little bit more of the caffeine. But it's a little bit easier on your stomach than green tea might be for the most part. So this black tea is very effective at just replacing your coffee. But it also has a unique property that's going to help your mood. You see, black tea contains something known as methyl xanthine. Methyl xanthine has been shown in multiple studies to boost what is called serotonin within your body. So it's going to help you feel good, help you relax a little bit, help you be a little bit calm. So the point is that black tea is really good for a person that is looking for a replacement to coffee, but also might need a little pick-me-up. Because sometimes when you're fasting, serotonin levels can dip, you're not getting those carbohydrates in, so it's a little bit harder to feel satiated and feel good in the mood department. But when you have some black tea, it can actually help you feel a little bit better and lift your spirits. So that's where it's good. But it also does have still a small amount of antioxidant effects. So it can still have a good benefit when it comes down to promoting the autophagy effects of fasting. You see, you're already in a great position where your body is recycling cells. You still have some reactive oxygen species that are floating around. Your body needs to go ahead and fight those, and black tea is going to help that. So now let's talk about the next one. Okay, green tea that is decaffeinated with ginseng. Now, the reason that I include this on my list is simply because you need a non-stimulant tea to talk about here. Thing is, is green tea is powerful. Those EGCGs, those catechins are very, very powerful antioxidants that do a lot of things within the body. But we're not always in a position where we want that 35 milligrams of caffeine that's ordinarily coming out of green tea, right? We want to be in a position where we can still get the benefits, still get the mental clarity, but perhaps without the jitters or without the caffeine. So that's exactly where decaffeinated green tea comes in. Don't think that the benefit's all from the caffeine. Okay, but you can find decaf green tea that has ginseng in it, or you can just take ginseng separately. See, ginseng does some pretty powerful things, but the main thing that I want to focus on is what it does with your immune system. It helps you out a lot. You see, there was actually a study that took 227 people. Half of those people they gave a ginseng supplement to, and half of the people they did not. But both groups they gave a flu vaccine to. And what they wanted to measure was over the course of four weeks, who ended up acquiring a cold or flu. But what they found was that the subjects that ended up taking the ginseng supplement ended up having two-thirds less instances of colds and flus than those that did not because it boosts immune cell activity. Well, what this is going to do is reduce inflammation within your body because your body's not going to have to work to boost those immune cells. It's already getting them up, so inflammation levels are already where they need to be, and they have less instance and less chance of getting totally out of control. Now, additionally, ginseng has some powerful effects when it comes down to reducing terminocrosis factor alpha and interleukin-6. 
Basically, these are inflammatory markers within the body. If we can reduce those, it means we're reducing inflammation. Fasting in and of itself reduces inflammation, so why not make it even better? Now, this is again only going to be for someone that's looking for the additional boost without the caffeine. Which leads me into the next one, which is fully leaded green tea in a matcha form. Now, this is totally awesome stuff. I've been using matcha for years and I've talked about it in other videos. I think I've done two or three other videos in the past purely touting the benefits of matcha. But in this video, I've actually partnered with Four Sigmatic, who has an awesome matcha. And I want to give you the facts on how I use matcha and how you may want to use it in your fasting protocols. You see, the thing with matcha is that it's not regular green tea. It's still the same leaf, but it's grown a little bit different. You see, what makes matcha tea different, why it's so much more effective, is it's grown in the shade. This is extremely difficult to do and requires a lot of attention, but when it's grown in the shade, it boosts the level of chlorophyll within the plant. You see, when you have a plant that's in the shade, it has to produce more chlorophyll to get a little bit more green so that it can ultimately attract more sunlight to process photosynthesis so it can grow. So it has to work harder, but it ends up being a lot more powerful when it comes down to antioxidants. Then, when it's harvested, it's destemmed and deveined, and it's crushed into a super finely ground powder, which means that it's instantized. So normal green tea you have to brew, and when you brew it, you lose a lot of antioxidants and you create a lot of acidity. But when it's instantized in a super high quality matcha form, you're absorbing it all without destroying any of the flavonoids and without destroying any of the effects that are positive on your body. That's exactly why matcha is phenomenal. Plus, it has a little bit more caffeine because it's easy to absorb. So it's a great one to do in the morning if you don't mind just getting a little bit amped up and getting some good energy throughout the course of the day. It's totally awesome for that. But you want to couple it with lion's mane. Now here's the cool thing. I've been using lion's mane, which is a form of mushroom extract for years too, to boost my cognition and boost my overall brain performance. Well, Four Sigmatic has managed to combine matcha with their famed lion's mane extract, which is what they've been known for for so long. See, lion's mane does some cool things in the brain. What it does is it actually stimulates nerve growth factor. What that means is it helps you grow new neurons and new synapses. So it actually creates more brain activity in a very positive way. Now, if you've seen my videos on fasting before, you know that when you're fasting, your brain slows down. And I know that sounds bad, but it's good. Your brain slowing down means that it's able to recover and able to regenerate. So you add lion's mane into the mix and it really accelerates how your brain can recover and regenerate, thereby boosting both short and long-term memory. So it's really phenomenal if you're someone that's getting up in the morning and you have to go to work and you have to be able to use your brain and focus and be able to pay attention to very, very important things. That's where matcha comes in place, especially when it's combined with lion's mane. Now, since I have partnered with Four Sigmatic on this particular video because of my love for matcha, you can click on the link down in the description section and you're going to see that you can get access to all their products, including the matcha with lion's mane, and get it at a special rate that you ordinarily wouldn't get. All right, so now let's move in to the next tea. The next tea is going to be chamomile. Now, why do I include chamomile? Well, for one, I wanted to include one that was herbal. But two, I wanted to include a tea that might work for someone that is doing a longer term fast. Maybe they're fasting longer than just an intermittent period of 16 or 20 hours. Maybe they're going into a 48 hour fast because it all comes into play and you don't exactly want to be caffeinating up right before you go to bed. The thing with chamomile is it's known widespread to relax you, but it contains something known as apigenin. And what this apigenin does is actually, get this, it affects benzodiazepam receptors in your brain. You know what a benzo is? We're talking about Valium, we're talking about Xanax, anything like that that makes you super chill, makes you relax, they give you Valium before surgery so you don't get all freaked out. Well, chamomile tea works on the same receptors in your brain that benzodiazepine pharmaceuticals work on. So it literally relaxes you the same way that Valium or Xanax does. Of course, not to that same degree. But I drink chamomile when it's time to just chill out. When it's evening time and I don't want to consume any extra calories, it's a perfect tea to drink in the evening time. I don't recommend drinking it during the course of the day because it does chill you out almost to the point where you feel a little bit complacent. The old Peter Rabbit thing where he drinks chamomile before he got sick, I don't know, maybe I'm dating myself there, but it also boosts your immune system as well. But that's just an extra benefit that we don't need to talk about here. So as always, huge, huge thank you to Four Sigmatic for making this video possible and for giving all of my fans and my subscribers an awesome price on matcha and also all their mushroom extracts. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel. If you have ideas for future videos, make sure that you hit me in the comment section below and let me know what you wanna see. I'll see you soon.